All right, everyone. So for day three of the class, um, a quick recap is that what we've done is we've learned some basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are the three pillars of what our mobile app will be. And yes, those are traditionally web languages. You use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make a website. But uh, with the Cordova framework that we will introduce next month, we can take that um, those web technologies and convert them basically into the appropriate Android code, the appropriate iPhone code, Windows Phone, whatever. We'll be able to convert our humble web project into a full-featured mobile device project, which will then be able to take advantage of the camera of your device, contacts, text messaging, database storage, all of that stuff. That'll be next month. We're still building our foundation of our knowledge of what we need to do to get to that point. If you've got any experience in previous web design classes, you could, in, to some degree, skip right to part two, because you have some experience, perhaps, in web design. So in part two is where we're going to focus on taking that web knowledge to the next level to be a full-featured, real app, downloadable from the real app stores. Uh, you can give it away. You can sell it. And that's things we'll be talking about in part three of the course. Um, we saw that we started from nothing on uh, day, on day uh, one and two. Um, and we'll be able to quickly get up and running to create something powerful and useful early on, which is going to be right now. So what we're going to do is our code editor of choice. You can use anyone you like, but in this class we're going to be using Notepad++. So go ahead and go to your start menu and start typing Notepad++ and we're going to use Notepad. I believe we've also got some other editors on these computers. We'll just use this one because it's pretty quick uh, and robust. So let's launch Notepad++ from the start menu. We then want to go up to the File menu, New. And we'll save our project, so File, Save As. I'm going to save this on my flash drive, and at the end of the day, I'm going to make it available to you on the network folder. But I'm going to save this to my flash drive. with today's date dot html. Make sure your save as type is hypertext markup language. It's a common mistake here that Notepad++ and many code editors can let you write a variety of code. So if you don't specify what kind of code you're working with, it might not behave how you think. So make sure you're saving it with some file name on your flash drive, preferably, but as HTML. One more time, one last time, we will create an empty quick document out of the knowledge we've had before and then right away get into a much faster pace. So for a little bit, one last time of practice to create an empty document, uh, a very simple HTML5 compliant document, we're going to once again create this structure Remember this from last time, the last two times. So take a moment to create the basic structure like we did last time. So we saw this previously. I'm going through it quickly, of course. And I'll give you a moment to do it yourself. Uh, but out of these 10 lines, this is a fully functional, fully featured basic website. So let's take a moment to write this, and then we'll get up very quickly after this. Now, if you are new this week, you want to make sure that your screen looks as close to mine as possible. If you're using Notepad++ like I'm recommending, 
and all of your text, all of your code is only black, that's a, an indicator of something wrong. Mine is color-coded. Yours should be too, blues and reds and so forth. If it's all simply one color, call me over because you didn't save it as an HTML document. Now notice on my screen, whenever I am typing some code, I usually zoom in. You are able to zoom in to various degrees. Your computers are set with a different sort of setting that I actually don't like, so don't do this. But notice how I can zoom in and zoom out very easily. You can do that. Don't do it by pressing the Windows key and then plus or minus. You're not going to get the same zoom as me because you have some sort of weird basic theme which all that it will do is create a bar at the top that is zoomed in. It's kind of weird. So instead, if you do need to zoom into your code, because it can be a little small, what you can do is, on your keyboard, you can press Control Plus, and that'll zoom in your code. Not the whole window, just your code. So Control Plus. Uh, that's plus and minus on the, I can't pull the keyboard, plus and minus on the number pad, not the number row. Control plus on the number pad zooms your code in. Control minus zooms it out. Just a couple more seconds. That's our basic bit of code right there. And then what we're going to do is make this much more impressive very quickly. So our workflow has been, we we'll write some code, we'll save the code, then we'll run the code. So if you haven't saved yet, the little floppy disk icon should be red. Go ahead and save. And then up, and if you're new especially, you want to see this, you want to save your work, and then you click the Run menu and select a web browser. Anyone you like, I'm going with Firefox, it's just the first one at the top. Keyboard shortcut control alt shift X. So run this. Run this in your browser. I'm running it in Firefox. And the result is not too impressive yet, but at least what I'm seeing is my project being processed and then displayed in the browser. I'm in Firefox, and it's showing it up on the tab and my Hello World. If anything else looks different or weird, you might not have typed your code properly. And again, if you have any trouble with your code, raise your hand, call me over, I'll help you out as best as possible. We can help each other out, but if you do so, keep it at a reasonable volume, please. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about using a framework to quickly create a layout. On day one and two, we worked with some basic tags like h1 and div and um, p tag and all of that, some basic structure. And then we styled it with some CSS, a background color here or there, text color, sizes of things, drop shadows. That was day one and day two. And then we played with a little bit of JavaScript. So there exists many libraries out there, which are collections, which are basically shortcuts. Shortcuts to help you quickly create something. We did this 10 lines. Some of us did it in one minute. Some of us are spending a little longer. And that's OK. But I don't want to, over and over, have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I could have this typed up and saved somewhere as template. And I can bring it back every time I want to start from scratch. So 
other people have had that idea and they've created frameworks, they've created libraries, ways for us to quickly get up and running. One of the most popular ones is jQuery. So jQuery is a JavaScript library that will help us type JavaScript code quickly to help us do things faster. Their motto actually is write less, do more. When we wrote a little JavaScript previously, we had a line that was about 40 characters long. That same line can be compressed down to like 12 characters in jQuery. Both are equivalent, but one is less typing, which means faster typing, less errors, because you're typing less. Um, but in order for those jQuery commands to work, we need the jQuery library. We need to tap into the jQuery library in order for those shortcuts to work. We're going to use jQuery and we're going to use jQuery mobile right now. jQuery mobile is an offshoot of the main jQuery library which is focused on, guess what, mobile projects. Projects that will look really nice on a mobile device, tablet or, or phone. So we need to access the jQuery and jQuery libraries. We can do it a couple of ways. We can download the libraries and save them as part of our project locally. We'll do that later. Or another way is we can link to those libraries directly from the internet. We don't have to download those files. We'll connect directly to the online versions of the files. We'll talk about pros and cons of that approach, but we'll do it and then we'll see what we end up with. So let's back up into the, uh, into the head block of our code. I've got line 5, give yourself a new line 6. So before the end of the head section, jQuery Mobile has a CSS library. It has a file that we can connect to that will automatically give us a lot of cool styling. To connect to it, we're going to type the link tag. So this link tag is one of the ones that doesn't have a pair. This is very different than the, than the link tag we would write down here in the body. Remember in the body we would write some text, make it an active link, that was the A tag. A for anchor text, active link. Link tag right here is specifically to connect to a CSS file, which could be in your flash drive or on the internet. It has no pair, and our syntax we've seen, if something doesn't have a pair, what does it need? Attributes. So let's add a couple of attributes here. Inside the link tag, we need to type rel equals quote end quote relationship. What's the relationship between the file we're about to connect to and this document? This file that we're linking to is a style sheet. So in the quotes we'll say style sheet, one word, lowercase. Next attribute, href. That sounds familiar. We needed that when we made a link uh, in the body. We connected to a website. You were able to click my name, I think we did. We clicked my name and we went to my website as, in, as, a, as, an, as an active link. This is going to link to a CSS file. Now this is going to be a big address, so I'm going to type it and retype it so you can see it. A, Again, I'll give you my address, my code at the end of the day, but try to type this in exactly as I'm about to type it. Yes, I have it memorized. HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS rolls off the tongue. Take a moment to type that. Yes, you have to type it exactly as it is here. Slashes, dots and dashes, type it exactly as you see it here. The, the, we'll do this the first time the hard way. The way that hopefully when you see that way, then when we do it the easy way, you appreciate it. So we're not going to do the easy way yet. We'll do the hard way, which is to type it all completely from scratch like this. And the whole point of this line is for our very basic document, our black and white document,
to connect to the jQuery mobile CSS file. Notice it ends in .css. So this now has like 500 or like 1,000 lines. I don't know how big it is. Let's say it's 1,000 lines of code with a bunch of styling, with a bunch of um, features to do drop shadows quickly and easily and alignment and all of that stuff. And you often don't see something like this. You see .text, .css, .html. You see one extension. This is common, however, in, in web projects because this is the minified version of the code. Our code right now that we're looking at is unminified, meaning that there's spaces and tabs and comments, perhaps. It's unminified. It's very readable by people. But it's more efficient if it's minified, meaning all of the extra space is taken out, all of the comments are taken out, all of the paragraphs are taken out, just all of the human readable stuff is taken out. It's more efficient. So we're connecting to a minified version of jQuery Mobile 1.4.5 on the jQuery.com site. We won't see this result just yet. We need two more libraries. But this time, we'll skip all the way down to give yourself a new line 10. Actually, before that, why not write a comment? I'm going to write a comment right above above what I just said. Links to the jQuery mobile online CSS library. That's what that does. So this is going to need three ancillary files. One CSS file and two JavaScript files. Remember how we talked about that CSS and JavaScript can be uh, embedded internal and external? Or inline, embedded, external. Right now, this is an external reference. Let's add another one. This time it's JavaScript. So previously we saw that we typed the script tag. This one does have a pair, and I'll keep it on one line. We could put it on two lines. We'll keep it on one line. We won't add anything between the tags, but we will add an attribute. We will add an attribute to the script tag. This one is simply src equals src. That's reminiscent of when we added an image. What's the source of the image? In this case, what's the source of the script file? Previously, we wrote a bunch of code between the script tags. Well, we're going to connect to a JavaScript library on the same server and pull it down for when we need it. Under source, we'll type again HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash two dot dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js so reminiscent link and script they're reminiscent but notice the way we type the CSS connection and the way we type the script connection. We're not going to type any JavaScript in our script tag. The specification says that it's either or. Either type your type your JavaScript in the tags or connect to a library, but not both. But not both. So we're connecting to the jQuery.com library, the jQuery.com file where that has like a thousand lines of code, which will help us quickly create more advanced projects. We need one more line, and we can speed this up a little bit by copying the same line 
that you just typed and pasting it. Because it's going to be another script tag pointing to a very similar location, but to the jQuery mobile JavaScript library. It's just about the same code, but except except for the actual file, right? This this is the server. What's the file that is further going to be mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot js very careful there. On the previous line where we typed the other jQuery mobile, it was .min.css. And now it's .min.js. Yes, there's a lot here that you could type in correctly. Um, Of course, uh, I'll give you the code later on, and we can look this up online very easily, but we'll, we'll give it a shot trying to type it manually for a moment. We're connecting to the online version. It's known as a CDN, Content Distribution Network. This, many people are connecting to this file all over the world, these three files. It's content being distributed, distributed upon their network, CDN, Content Distribution Network. It just means we're connecting to an online file. <coughs> Save it and run it, and you should see some result. Here it is before I added those lines. Here it is after. The font changed. The font should have changed. The background color should have changed. That's part of your indicator that it worked. So if it didn't change like this, let's pause. Does anyone need any help? Again, it's a big line of code. I can't quite show it all completely. Perhaps I'm going to zoom in. That's our code so far. If it worked, we should see something like this again. Before, white background, Times New Roman font. After. Uh, grayish background and a new like uh, Arial type of font. This is your first indicator that we're tapping into something here. We've just tapped into like 2,000 lines of code, 3,000 lines of code, and we have access to it all. We can of course go to jQuery.com and look up the whole specification. We'll look at it in detail later. But what this is bringing us toward is to be able to quickly create projects faster, more efficiently, and specifically mobile projects. So jQuery is a global team of people and companies and organizations banding together to make it easier to create web apps. Then another subset of people and organizations banded together to create jQuery mobile, which would be to focus on making uh, mobile-friendly projects quickly. Because now with these things we're going to be able to um, create a, a mobile app much, much faster. Uh, let's back up it'd be good to maybe write a uh, note or a uh, comment up here. The jQuery and jQuery mobile JavaScript online libraries. So right away we're going to get access to these uh, features. That's great. Could there possibly be a negative to what we've just done? You have to be online. Every time we load our website, it will want to connect with another website. And therefore, when eventually we get this as an app, 
um, if the person doesn't have good reception, or the person has no internet access or Wi-Fi access, your app cannot access those CDNs. Your app cannot access those online libraries, and therefore, your app will not function and not look like it's supposed to. It'll behave like this, like it has no connection to those files. So we'll deal with that later. Later on, we will download these files and have them locally, so then we're not reliant on an internet connection for our app to even function basically. Let's back up to the head section and we'll add right after title, we'll add another tag up here, another meta tag. The main purpose for the group that created jQuery mobile was to be able to quickly create web apps that felt, you know, at home on a mobile device. Part of the way to do that is to also create this meta tag, which sort of shapes your project and make it, makes it a little bit more mobile friendly. Uh, mobile friendly devices, I mean mobile apps on a device should be of course mobile friendly. So with a meta tag, we can accomplish that. Let's back up and add some attributes to this meta. One is name, one is content. Lots of meta tags out there. We just saw car set earlier. Here's one of name. The name or the purpose of this meta tag is to deal with the viewport. The viewport is the fancy way of saying, you know, the main visible area of your web browser. Uh, when I'm on my web browser like this, the viewport is everything in the window. You know, outside of this edge, this is the viewport. Above that part is no longer the viewport. This is the viewport in your web browser. Everything in the main, almost like in the main body of the document. When we get it as an app, your viewport will be even larger because your app is not going to have tabs. Your, your app eventually is not going to be a website. It's going to be an app. So it's not going to have tabs and back buttons and all of that. So the viewport on a mobile device is basically the whole front of your screen. So we need to define here to take advantage of that. In content, we're then going to say initial dash scale equals one. When you open your regular old web browser, what? Scale. Yes, initial scale. When you open your web browser on your device and you visit a website, oftentimes, if the text is too small, you can zoom in. You can you know, pinch or unpinch on a website to zoom in. Initial scale one is basically saying 100% zoom. A person will no longer, have to, no longer have to zoom in to see the text larger. It should already be scaled automatically to one hundred percent of the viewport comma space user scalable equals no if you're using an app like Instagram Facebook Twitter etc are you able to zoom in to see anything no if there's a picture that you need to see you might be able to tap tap on it and such but you can't zoom in to the Facebook icon you can't zoom into the, the footer of Twitter. On a website, you can do that. You can zoom in on a website. Right here, we're saying, no, don't let the user zoom in because we're already zooming in for them, initial scale 100. They don't need to zoom in anymore. We've already grown the design to fit as best as possible on the device. So don't let them zoom in and out. That breaks the illusion that it's an app. Comma one more attribute for the moment, with equals, well I want to stretch out my app to fit as much as the screen as possible. So we'll say with equals device dash width. Whatever the width of the device, take your app and stretch it out wide to fill it. The height will scale proportionately. 
So if someone then goes horizontal on the device, it'll still scale out to take up as much space on a horizontal device, as well as vertical. So that meta tag there is a very valuable one for our ultimate goal of having a uh, mobile project. So we'll write the note, we'll write the comment, create a mobile friendly layout. Zoomed in to 100 not zoom inable anymore, and then the width is stretched out to fill up the space. Create mobile friendly. It's hard to talk and type at the same time and think. Create mobile friendly layout. There's no real difference if I see my result. Now, I'm doing this, you don't have to, of course, but every time I make a change, I go up to run Firefox because it creates a new tab. I like that to teach with because it shows you before and after. Each tab is the new version of your code. If you're simply refreshing each version when you make a change, it might not matter to you, but then your previous version gets erased because you're refreshing it to the latest version. I will open a new version, I will run it every time so that I can compare perhaps like this. No jQuery mobile? Yes jQuery mobile. And that simply happens every time you do run the browser. It opens a new version of it in a new tab. Alright, so we've built this foundation at this point. We have a lot of capabilities that we have now will now be able to tap into. And what we're going to do is create a basic project that has multiple screens. We'll start off with something basic like a home screen, an about screen, contact screen or something like an app. I've got an app, let's say Instagram. I can log into Instagram and I can see the home feed with all of the latest photos. I can go to my profile screen and see my per particular profile. I can go to my, um, what else, uh, contact screen or whatever. I can go to different screens in Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. We can do that here as well. Let's uh, go to line, uh, give yourself a new line 12 before the hello world. We'll use the HTML5 tag section. It has a pair. comment. Use section to create new screen folds of content. I will have a section for the home screen. I can create another section in the same document for the profile screen. I can create another section for the contact screen. So all of the different sections of my app could be in this one file that's known as an SPA. One file, one HTML file can have multiple sections, which are screens, that's known as an SPA. This is an SPA, single page app. You might have seen that on a regular old website. You visit someone's website, there's a menu at the top that says contact. You click that and all it does is it scrolls you down to a later part of the website. You click, uh, you click the portfolio button and it scrolls you back to the portfolio section. The whole website is one long website, a single page website or single page app. We're going to do something like that here. 
but obviously not the same way in that you're going to scroll up and down to find different screens. We're going to have different screens. We're going to look at the home screen, click a button, it'll animate and show you uh, the contact screen. Click the nav bar button and it'll take you to the about screen. But all of that will contain it with, within one file. We could do classic web design and separate them all into separate files in contrast to an MPA, multiple page app, for example, uh, home.html has the home screen, about.html has the about screen, etc. We're going to put all of those different sections into one file. The, the main file we're working with here. Example, home.html. More commonly, index.html. Right now, our, our HTML file has got today's date. Doesn't matter. But later on, we'll use index. That's, uh, that's very common. Index will include all of our screens, all of our content, one file. There's pros and cons to it. We'll talk about it later. But right now, here, what we're trying to do is create a brand new section. So this hello world that I was writing, let's actually move it into the section. Right now it's not in any section. It's kind of existing in a weird limbo. Uh, we have to have content in a section. One thing that we can do in Notepad is that if you select your code, you can actually drag and drop it. So you can select and cut and paste, or be advised that you can select your code and just drag it and drop it where you need it. Let's um, create a new section. We'll write uh, page two. Just to make it obvious, then we'll refine it. So if we're going to make it obvious, page one, and yeah, we'll leave it as that. Hello world, and page two. There's going to be a screen that will display Hello World. Then there will be another screen that displays page 2. H1 and H1. Yes, good point. Section is an HTML5 tag. We saw a couple of days ago, I guess, we used the footer HTML5 tag. And the concept of that is that the, uh, the copyright notice, for example, is going to be at the foot of the website. When we did footer and we viewed it, it didn't actually put the footer at the bottom of the screen. I had said that still requires other things, such as styling. Conceptually, though, the footer is at the bottom of the, of the app. Right here, these section tags are not going to behave how I'm promising yet. If you save and run this, you'll be very disappointed that you're going to see Hello World in page 2. Just by using the section tags does not mean we get what I'm saying, which is that a screen full will say Hello World and a different screen will say page 2. That comes next from the jQuery, the jQuery CSS. So, let's back up to the section tag and we'll add a couple of attributes. Data dash role equals and in quotes we'll say page. At this point now, save it and run it. See what you get. Section with an attribute of data role. And notice it's R-O-L-E, not R-O-L-L. -L. Role 
equals page. Again, it's all lowercase unless I specify otherwise. You should get a result that looks like this. Page 2 disappears. Makes sense. Page 2 text is in a completely different section. Yes, it's the one document, but it's in a different section. And so whatever is in this section will appear on the first screen full of content. That's how eventually we're going to have an app with a home screen, an about screen, a contact screen, a register screen, a, you know, calculation screen, whatever. We're going to separate them simply by sections. Let's go to the second section and give that a data role also of page. You're going to see the syntax of this taking shape very quickly. I'm going to create different screenfuls sections. And each of those sections is then defined as a page by a data role. We're going to be able to link from one page to the next, of course, one section to the next, of course. But in order for us to do that, then we need to differentiate each of these. Right now, they're both generically section page. They don't have any unique identifier. We talked about unique identifiers before. What am I getting at? Unique identifiers. Unique identifiers. ID. We need to give this a unique identifier so that it is separate from the other page. This can be, for example, our home section. And this one can be our about section. If you save it and run it, nothing quite changes. It's still the same as before. We're laying this um, foundation of, we have different sections. It's a single page app, an SPA. Um, we will divide our content into multiple sections, all in one document. Well, I want to be able to get from section home over to section about. I need to be able to jump over from the home screen to the about screen. That can be done with a plain old link that we've learned previously. So let's say inside of the section of home, we'll say go to page 2. We're going to make that a link. That when you click on it, it'll go to page 2. We talked about making links before. That was the A tag. Type some text, like go to page two, and then wrap the A tags around it, A slash A. That will be common active link. That needs an attribute, href. And what we're writing in the quotes, in our case, is uh, hash mark about. This should look a little familiar. When we talk about CSS, we added a class or an ID. Classes had a dot. IDs had a hash mark. jQuery Mobile borrows that. It borrows the hash mark for IDs so that something like this can work. Save it and run it. You should get a link on your home screen. You should be able to click on it, and it should then
take you to the About section. link, go to page 2, click, page 2. No way back, we didn't program it yet. Let's pause there. You got one section, then we're leaking to the second section. You want to need a little help at this point? So, it's, uh, it's because of jQuery but more specifically, jQuery Mobile, why, why this is working. You've got a section, separate sections, which then are separated. We saw before adding data role page, it all showed it as once. Simply then adding data role page, now they're separate sections. How does that happen? Well, that's that whole jQuery and jQuery Mobile library. There's a bunch of built-in stuff. jQuery, I mean, a data role equals page gets translated basically by jQuery mobile to make it do what it's happening here. If we wanted to do what we're seeing here, we would have to write ourselves like a hundred lines of code just to get that to work with, you know, 12 characters. That's the whole point of, the, of these libraries. I could do that myself. If I take the feud class and I'm here for 18 weeks or however long it is, I can learn all of that from scratch how to do it myself. This has been done jQuery mobile team invented this. Put it out there for free. Anyone can use it, change it, apply it. I just need to learn it. And so now I've learned how to make two pages out of my single HTML file. I have to press back to get back here because I've only made one a one-way button. I've got two whole sections now. Yes. Look here. Uh, confirm that your about link is spelled exactly the same.
for everyone. Uh, you don't quite have it. We'll take a break very soon. But you see here, if I if I talked to you, there's probably a very simple mistake that you made. A missing dot or an extra letter or something. And so we're going to get used to, the harder we get, that, okay, I make it look so easy. Yes, I've been teaching the class three years, so it is easy. But when you're doing it yourself, you're gonna, we're going to start to need to use the, the console. Remember the console that we talked about last time? To get, to get us used to that, I've got my project loaded up, and um, you want to press, uh, press uh, F12. So mine's not working. You want to press F12 uh, on your browser. That should put up, pull up the console. And I just noticed, looking at different people's codes, I intentionally made something wrong. Firefox doesn't see any problem. Uh, I went back to Notepad, and then I did run Chrome, pulled up the developer tools, F12, and Chrome did see a problem. So unfortunately, you might not get the same results out of both browsers. So, uh, oh, I see there. jQuery mobile link. So Firefox thought it was fine. He said, yeah, whatever file you've got online, let's get it. And Chrome said, no, we, we looked, and there's no file online called jQuery mobile. So Chrome gave me an error, and Firefox didn't. Uh, so we're going to use this console as our first defense, perhaps, to try to figure out our, our issues. But I think we probably got everyone's fixed. If not, we'll do break in a moment. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. This is the tip of the iceberg of, of what this class is going to be about, uh, being able to use these frameworks to be able to create cool things quickly and easily and very powerfully. Last time we were here, we had a very basic structure of a website. Yeah, we dabbled with a little color and such, but now we're starting to do something like this with a different page, and did you see that's an animation? We never specified it. But there's a subtle animation happening between these two screens. All of this is controllable, of course. And this, for example, this button, this link right here, this clickable element, that's a plain old href, a plain old link tag invented in 1989 you know, HTML 1.0, but with jQuery Mobile, we can very easily upgrade this to something new and modern and cool. We'll actually turn it into a real-looking button with a few extra attributes here. So we're going to see that jQuery Mobile is a lot about adding the right attributes to the existent elements to upgrade them. We're going to upgrade our plain old href here. We're going to make this from a basic link into a cool button. So let's back up to line 20 or so, where you've got your ahref, and we will add a brand new attribute. This one is going to be an attribute of data role equals button. Save it and run it. See what you get. Data role equals button. Data dash role equals button. We've seen data dash role equals page. Data dash role equals button. Ooh, a button. Drop shadow. Rounded corners. Mouse hover. All of that came from that basic link right there. If we were to do this ourselves, that'd be a lot of CSS to make that look as well as that. What we did, let's actually count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 characters, 19 characters to create a cool button, whereas we would have to probably write 19 lines of code without jQuery Mobile. Let's see what else this can do. Data roll equals button will do uh, data dash inline equals true quotes. Sometimes I forget the exact detail, but obviously the syntax has been something equals something in quotes. Data dash inline, data dash roll. Hmm, if only we can look up which, uh, which other of these do we have. Data dash inline equals true. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see. 
Oh, now the button did not take up all of the space. There it is without any specification. And here it is with a specification. Now the button only takes up as much space as necessary. That's in line. Instead of the whole line, I guess just this much. This much is necessary for that button. It still has the behavior of the drop shadow, the rounded corners, a hover. It still works as before. Oh, did you see a little blue color that popped up for a moment when I clicked on it? That's built in too. That would have also required a lot of CSS effort to get it to work. Data roll equals button. Yeah, you've got a link upgraded to a button. It would be nice if I can do a little bit more here. We can. Data dash icon. We can add an icon to this button. jQuery Mobile, our version right here, 1.4.5 has about 50 built-in icons. And of course, we have the ability to make our own icons. So out of those 50, we don't find the perfect icon, we can make our own. We can draw our own in Photoshop and add it. But here's a built-in one. Let's just say, um, uh, we'll, do, we'll do the one called User. Save and run that. See what you get. data-icon activates the icon feature of this button and one of the icons is called user. And look at that, I get the little user icon. Here's a couple off the top of my head. Home. That'll create a little home button. Um, gear. Creates a little gear. Like let's say you've got a settings button click the settings button to go to the settings so there's home there's gear there's the gear there's a bunch of them here's just one more we can look them all up of course we will look them up but for the moment let's just do one more let's say this one is our carrot not carrot carrot not carrot but carrot carrot dash r carrot carrot save and run that and see what that carrot is no, it's not going to be Bugs Bunny's favorite food. It's going to be something else. Carrot. That creates a right arrow. Why didn't they call it right arrow? They do have one that is also a right arrow. That one is arrow R. Arrow dash R. Different kind of arrow. Arrow dash R. Hmm, if there's an arrow dash R, could there have been an arrow dash L, an arrow dash U, etc. We will look them up a little later, but I'm showing here that what we've been able to do is take the humble um, link and upgrade it to a button via jQuery Mobile. I'll do one more thing here. Right now, this transitions between this screen and this screen with a little basic animation we can control that as well. We have, I think, six built-in animations, and we can define our own, although that one's a little harder. But it's another attribute here. Let's add now data-transition equals. We'll do one called slide. Slide animation. Data-transition equals slide. Save it and run it and see that result. One right now is a basic fade, add slide, and see what you get. <coughs> Let's see. I click it. Ooh, look at that. It slides over. And if I press back, it slides back the opposite way. Built in. Yes, that can be programmed. That's a lot of CSS and JavaScript to get that to work. We activated it simply, you know, with 20 characters. Data transition equals slide. Let's see another one. Um, some of these look more impressive depending on the content and such. Uh, but here's one. Uh, flip. The flip transition.
see it. Click it. Again, the page is kind of empty, so you don't get the full effect. But it is flipping like the page flip. If it had more stuff there, you would see more of it flip. But that's another possible animation. One last one. This one always impresses people. I won't even describe it. Just try it. Data transition flow. F L O W. So you try data transition flow. How would you describe it? Let's see. Fancy. It's like I'm swiping the whole screen away. Obviously, that's the most extravagant transition. Uh, but definitely eye-catching. And this is just a link with various data attributes, role, inline icon transition. All of these make sense because of the jQuery mobile, JavaScript, and CSS files. If we were to remove these lines of JavaScript, it wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't know what to do. It wouldn't know what data inline means. Those are like shortcuts, which are then unraveled inside of these libraries with thousands of lines of built-in code. We don't need to know how those work exactly, but we should know how to use them to our advantage. We'll look up the manual and all of that for this stuff a little later. Uh, let's take our first break, uh, see if all of this is working. And usually what I do is I give my work uh, at the end of the day, Yes, but also in the middle of the day, I'm going to put a temporary copy of my code into the network folder. I'll call it TMP with today's date. So if you'd like a copy of my work so far, I'm about to put it in the network if you want to compare it or get a copy of it. We'll take a break at 7.20. We'll be back at 7.30.